Slenderman is a new horror film based off of the Slenderman creepypasta character, and this film is distributed by Sony Pictures Screen Gems. You know Screen Gems, the guys who made such great hits as No Good Deed, B The Perfect Guy, When the Bow Breaks, The Roommate, The Underworld movies, and the Resident Evil movies. Bunch of hits! And this movie is exactly what you'd expect if you heard that Screen Gems is making a Slender Man movie. It's about these four girls who watch Slender Man, they summon him because of some online link, and then they start seeing creepy stuff, and that's the whole movie. Just non-stop scenes that lead into a BOOM noise. Even if it's like just a normal person, they still have to insert a BOOM! Like it echoes at times too, where like, it, it, like several seconds have passed, but you can still hear the loud sound effect. It's really great filmmaking. I didn't really have that much high hopes for this movie. I was hoping in the back of my mind that this could be a good movie because back in like 2012, Slender Man actually kind of got under my skin. I was a little younger then, so take that with a grain of salt, but that actually did kind of freak me out. And I feel like a Slender Man movie coming out around that time would have been perfect for younger me, but now it's been five years. I've matured a bit. Slender Man doesn't scare me all that much anymore, but now that they're making a movie about him, I was like, okay, this could be a good opportunity to like bring back some child hood fears of mine, or maybe just do something psychologically disturbing with the Slender Man character. And there's even a true story about these girls that actually believe Slender Man was a thing, so are you gonna make that movie? Like, are you gonna trick me with that? Or is are you gonna take that story and then fictionalize it to a degree? Or Like, I was, I was just more curious to see their approach for this film, as opposed to actually being excited to see it. And I walked out of this film, though I wasn't anticipating it, I walked out even more disappointed than I ever thought. This movie sucks. It sucks, dude. I do want to give credit where credit is due, though. The four main actresses, Julia Goldani Tellez, Annalise Basso, Joey King, and Jazz Sinclair, for the beginning part of the film, they actually did have some good chemistry with each other. They weren't acting over the top or obnoxious, but they also weren't acting like they didn't have any chemistry whatsoever. Like, they actually talked and acted like a group of friends would. And that's the thing that really surprised me, because for the first opening bit of the movie, I was like, okay, I can actually buy these four as friends, and I can actually see this entire movie just being about these four together together discussing Slender Man and all this stuff, like, I, I can actually see that. It takes about, like, what, ten minutes until one of them goes missing, Annalise Basso, mild spoiler, but it's in the opening of the movie, so it's not like it really matters that much anyways. And then all of a sudden these friends are then quickly turned into turmoil, and as much as I want to respect their acting chops at least, there are still a few moments where the acting just gets a little stale and a little a little over the top. For example, Joey King, and I wanted to support my girl Joey King in this one because, in case you don't know, I have a huge guilty pleasure love for Wish Upon last year, and I was hoping, like, okay, either Slender Man's gonna be surprisingly good, or it's gonna be hilariously awful, like, Wish Upon, and this movie isn't any of those things, but I still want to give credit to her that she did a fine enough job of an acting for the most part, but then there's these other scenes where she's, like, she's starting to act a little crazy, and she's, like, kind of losing her mind a bit, and all this stuff, and it's like, okay, this is, it's, it's a little much, like, can you tone it down just a bit? You're overacting a little bit, and it's a little hokey. Julia Goldani Tellez is the lead character in this film. I guess they have, like, one minor opening scene with her that sets up her character, sort of. It's the lamest, like, lead character setup I've ever seen, though. Like, literally, it's just her and her sister and her parents at a dinner table, and they talk about how she's gonna go meet up with her friends, and then they joke about her being pregnant and dropping out of school, and then she just goes with her friends. And that that's it. That's our lead character now. And it just felt like there really isn't anything there for any of these characters. Since Julio Goldani tells us the lead character named Haley, you'd think that there's something there for her to actually do as, as far as being the main character. Like, you'd think there's going to be more to that instead of just, she's another girl. But she's just another girl with not that much going on. And there's even something with Joey King's character, Ren, where she walks into Annalise Basso's character, Katie's house, and they're like sneaking by her passed out drunk dad. And Joey King kind of looks at Annalise's dad for a bit, and they cut back to him on the couch sleeping, then they cut back to her kind of staring, like almost, like in a very weird, like they're connected kind of way, and the others are walking ahead, so she has to catch up. So I was thinking like, okay, did you just set up that Ren has some sort of connection with Annalise Basso's father in this. Like, he's drunk all the time, so maybe there's some inappropriate things going on. Is that the direction they're gonna go? Maybe Slender Man's gonna psychologically torture her with this information? Nah. Doesn't come into play at all. It's literally just there so they can show the dad passed out again. 
And I was, that's the thing, that's the thing, though, is, like, I walked in with no expectations, but throughout the beginning part of the movie, I was like, okay, I can see where things can actually start happening, but then they don't act upon it. Like, when they actually get on the Slenderman forums and stuff, and researching Slenderman, I was thinking, like, okay, is this movie gonna go meta? Like, are they gonna start referencing how irrelevant Slenderman is, how dumb a lot of this stuff is about him? But no, they, they start taking it rather seriously, actually. And when they watch this video, this creepy video, I was expecting them to go like, oh, they're gonna laugh, like, throughout the entire thing, and they're just gonna make fun of it. But no, like, they treat it rather seriously, and by the end of the video they watch, they, one of them is like, yeah, not scary at all. Like, it's literally that same acting, like, shaky voice, clearly in fear, but they go, yeah, not scary at all. Like, cliche stuff like that. Like, how about they just start busting their butts off laughing at this and just making fun of it? Like, okay, Slender Man, oh, I'm so scared. Oh, listen to the three gongs, everyone. <laughs> how scary. Because at first, these four girls were acting very naturally with each other, but as soon as they start researching Slender Man, that's when it all starts to pitter away. That's when they all start getting missing and all this stuff, and the chemistry just kind of fades away after a bit because they all start to overact in panic. Jazz Sinclair was in When the Bow Breaks, and I'll give her credit, this is a better performance than When the Bow Breaks, but still, she doesn't have that much to do anyways, and what she does have to do is pretty lame. Like, as I said earlier, that every single scene in this movie pretty much leads into jump scares. So pretty much when you're watching these characters, you're like, you're literally just setting up jump scares for yourselves. Like, there's literally a moment where they're trying to fix the Slender Man issue, and they're all supposed to be blind folded like don't take off your blindfolds and then jazz sinclair as soon as joey king says this takes off her blindfold and it's like you're only doing this because in the script it says your character has to do this like i don't feel any drive for it i don't feel like the necessary fear at all i just don't get what's so scary about this and annalise basso god bless her because as i mentioned earlier she goes missing in the first 10 minutes of the movie and she was i think by far the best one out of the four like the way she just spoke her dialogue i was like that's actually like she's doing a very good job she's actually doing a little bit better than the other three that she's with but then she goes missing of course and then all that potential is just gone how about we get rid of jazz sinclair or julia goldani first like why not one of those two because annalise basso actually has like the most talent out of anyone i thought so none of the characters after a while feel like actual characters which i was really disappointed in because they did a good job in the first 10 minutes actually creating a realistic high school friendship there like they actually did a good job of not putting in a bunch of high school cliches like i thought they would but then eventually after they start interacting with slender man more that's when their friendship chemistry goes away and all sense of their realistic friendship just it just vanishes and I, that's what really made me disappointed but i'm talking about the characters and the acting but what about the actual scares in this film this is a horror film after all with slender man slender man used to scare me um not scary this movie's not scary in the slightest it's literally just a bunch of loud noises with the most innocent of things like people walking into frame <gasps> be scared there's literally only one subtle shot where they're showing these three friends at a computer and they're like in this corner of the frame but in the background you see like a huge shadow just looming over them and i say subtle because the framing lets you know instantly like okay look over here and the noise in the background you hear like alerts you like oh shoot there's the, the shadow of slender man it, it's like it would have been much better if the framing was just a little bit more tightly on them and you could still see a little bit of the background and just without any sounds at all have them continue to talk but then if you look over you're like oh is that a shadow there's even moments in the movie where slender man is in the shadows and i'll give them credit they did a good job hiding him for the most part in those shadows and he starts to move and i was thinking like okay this could be like a Mike Flanagan, Gerald's Game kind of thing, where whenever they cut to the Moonlight Man, there's like a little... But not a... Just a... But it's a noise so kind of silent that you can barely notice it, and you're just kind of looking at this thing like, oh dear god, like actually scared, instead of a noise telling you to be scared. But every time Slender Man would move in the shadows, it's just... <laughs> and then characters start screaming again, and it's like, there's no quiet moments, there's no great cinematography. I'll give them credit, there's a few shots here and there where it was very, like, unexpected, and I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, that's a weird thing to cut to, okay. So they did a good job setting an eerie thing with those few shots that I mentioned. But just the movie's not scary enough for me to actually say, like, it's a fun time. Like, it's really not. It's not like a wish upon where you're, like, laughing every two seconds or anything. Like, there's a, like two 
kind of scares that made me laugh. And I was like, <laughs> really? And then there's also a moment where a character says something, but then goes back on what she said, where that also had me laughing. And then there's another character action that's supposed to be like the sad thing, but it just had me laughing. I only laughed unintentionally four times in this movie, so this isn't like a wish upon or a truth or dare for me review coming soon. So it's just another lame studio horror film with just a couple entertaining terrible scares here and there, and just the lamest plot imaginable. This movie is literally just a script where characters lead into jump scares, and they just see weird stuff. What I said earlier about them kind of going meta and making fun of Slenderman and the irrelevance of it, I really do think that could have been an interesting approach to the screenwriting of this movie, but it felt like whoever wrote this movie just didn't care, and they're like a screenwriter for hire, and they don't know what Slenderman is, so they're like, okay, a uh, tall guy, a uh, ghost, I guess, um, okay, let's, uh, meh, meh, script done. There's literally moments where I was thinking like, okay, this could be an actual suspenseful sequence, there's certain moments in the woods that I thought could be good. No, each one just ends with so whatever. And there's literally moments where Slender Man um, hacks into FaceTime or something and you see like the characters looking at their phones and Slender Man's outside their house and it starts to zoom in like wah, going through walls too with the camera phone. And I was thinking like, oh, what's this going to lead to? Is this going to be leading into something good? Guess what it leads to? Jump scare! And I was like, God damn it, can you stop with the jump scares? There's so many jump scares in this movie that I'm just not scared at anything. You made me jump like once in the beginning because I, it's obvious jump scare sound effects will cause you to jump because they're so loud. After that, I just kind of grew numb to it. I was like, okay, here it comes. Three, two, one. <clears throat> there it is. Great. We can move on. There's several shots in the trailer that don't end up in the movie, but at the same time, the trailers kind of spoiled the movie because there's not that much going on in the story to begin with anyways. There's nothing going on with the characters. There's no other side of the story that you're missing from the trailers. Like I said earlier, it's exactly what you'd expect if I told you that Screen Gems and Sony were making a horror film about Slender Man. It's nothing but jump scares, the lamest kind of jump scares. There's no subtlety to it at all. And the CGI for Slender Man 2, oh my god. And I know they had Javier Botet, who played the Crooked Man in Conjuring 2. I know they had him dress up as him on set, but there's literally only like two scenes in the movie where I thought, okay, that's actually a dude. Literally every other time, it's like he's been covered up with this CGI gloss, and not even like a good CG, it's just like, like stuff I could probably make in After Effects right now. It's that cheap and lazy. And I was just thinking, right, and I remember watching a YouTube movie about Slender Man several years ago. I'm pretty sure it's still online. Just go watch that. That movie on YouTube is actually much better than what they try to do here. At least that movie did something kind of unique with the Slender Man story. With this one, it's just, we're being haunted and we're seeing weird stuff. There's two dream sequences in a row, each one ending with a character jolting out of bed screaming. It's so bad that a writer actually sat down and wrote that. Like, okay, dream sequence here, wake up, but then we're gonna have another one. Fake them out again. Like, God damn it, can you stop? And of course, I'm not gonna spoil it, but the way this movie ends with just the lamest summarization of what happened and the weirdest shot to end it on too had me just baffled beyond belief. I was thinking like, that's it? Like, that's it. Literally, it, the movie ends with the lines of dialogue, something around the lines of, that's just how it happens, you know? Like, that same kind of delivery, too, and the camera's focused on just this random shot of school, cut to black, and that's it. And I was thinking, like, what? That's how you want to end your movie? You don't want to show, like, I I'll take, I'll take a cheap shot of Slender Man jumping out of the camera, but you don't want to show us something else that's maybe a little disturbing, something more subtle. You don't want to show us anything at all. You just want to show basically nothing in frame as a character talks about what happened in the plot and then just it ends like that's uh! I really want to hate this movie because there's so much here to hate about it how lazy and cheap it is and there's so many other things that I could have mentioned that I haven't yet and I'll mention one other thing the cinematography sucks at a lot of times mainly because of the lighting at nighttime things are really too dark and you can't see anything it's not good nighttime lighting but then even during the day the color palettes are just all muted so whenever they show a bright 
touch screen or a laptop in your face, you're just instantly blinded. Like, God, turn it off! There's so much to hate about this movie, but I do want to give this movie credit, though. There's a few shots that actually kind of took me off guard, and I was like, oh, okay, wasn't expecting you to show that. That's kind of neat. And there's also a good chemistry between the four leads for the first bit. But as I said earlier, as the movie goes on, either they start overacting or they just start acting really stale. I'm going to give Slender Man a D. I wish I could get scared by this movie. I wish I could tell you to go see it because as a kid, I was kind of freaked out by Slender Man. But now, seeing a theatrical release of Slender Man six years after 2012, uh, just watch the Slender Man movie on YouTube. It's much easier to just watch. That one's shorter too. And it's actually a good movie. Like, it's actually a solid Slender Man movie. Why didn't they just approach those guys when making this movie? How about you just make a movie about the girls that actually went insane and killed their friend over Slender Man? Like, that would have been interesting too. Guess not. But if you've seen Slender Man, leave in the comments below what you thought of it. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time. <laughs>